The Passenger Pigeon from Roll Call of the Dead Species of American Birds via Our Vanishing Wildlife by William T. Hornaday. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Bologna Times The Passenger Pigeon by William T. Hornaday The Passenger Pigeon Ectopistes migratoria Linnaeus We place this bird in the totally extinct class, not only because it is extinct in a wild state, but only one solitary individual, a twenty-year-old female in the Cincinnati Zoological Gardens, now remains alive. One living specimen and a few skins, skeletons, and stuffed specimens are all that remain to show for the uncountable millions of pigeons that swarmed over the United States only yesterday, as it were. There is no doubt about where those millions have gone. They went down and out by systematic, wholesale slaughter for the market and the pot before the shotguns, clubs, and nets of the earliest American pot-hunters. Wherever they nested, they were slaughtered. It is a long and shameful story, but the grisly skeleton of its Michigan chapter can be set forth in a few words. In 1869, from the town of Hartford, Michigan, three carloads of dead pigeons were shipped to market each day for forty days, making a total of eleven million eight hundred and eighty thousand birds. It is recorded that another Michigan town marketed fifteen million eight hundred and forty thousand birds in two years. See Mr. W. B. Mershon's book, The Passenger Pigeon. Alexander Wilson, the pioneer American ornithologist, was the man who seriously endeavored to estimate by computations the total number of passenger pigeons in one flock that was seen by him. Here is what he has said in his American Ornithology. To form a rough estimate of the daily consumption of one of these immense flocks, let us first attempt to calculate the numbers of that above mentioned, as seen in passing between Frankfurt and the Indiana Territory. If we suppose this column to have been one mile in breadth, and I believe it to have been much more, and that it moved at the rate of one mile in a minute, four hours, the time it continued passing, would make its whole length two hundred and forty miles. Again, supposing that each square yard of this moving body comprehended three pigeons, the square yards and the whole space multiplied by three would give two billion two hundred and thirty million two hundred and seventy two thousand pigeons an almost inconceivable multitude and yet probably far below the actual amount happening to go ashore one charming afternoon to purchase some milk at a house that stood near the river and while talking with the people within doors i was suddenly struck with astonishment at a loud rushing roar succeeded by instant darkness which, on the first moment, I took for a tornado about to overwhelm the house and everything around in destruction. The people, observing my surprise, coolly said, It is only the pigeons. On running out, I beheld a flock, thirty or forty yards in width, sweeping along very low, between the house and the mountain, or height that formed the second bank of the river. These continued passing for more than a quarter of an hour and at length varied their bearings so as to pass over the mountains, behind which they disappeared before the rear came up. In the Atlantic states, though they never appear in such unparalleled multitudes, they are sometimes very numerous, and great havoc is then made amongst them with the gun, the clap-net, and various other implements of destruction. As soon as it is ascertained in a town that the pigeons are flying numerously in the neighborhood, the gunners rise en masse, the clap-nets are spread out on suitable situations, commonly on an open height in an old buckwheat field, four or five 
live pigeons with their eyelids sewed up are fastened on a movable stick a small hut of branches is fitted up for the fowler at the distance of forty or fifty yards by the pulling of a string the stick on which the pigeons rest is alternately elevated and depressed which produces a fluttering of their wings similar to that of birds alighting this being perceived by the passing flocks they descend with great rapidity and finding corn buckwheat etc strewed about begin to feed and are instantly by the pulling of a cord covered by the net in this manner ten twenty and even thirty dozen have been caught at one sweep meantime the air is darkened with large bodies of them moving in various directions the woods also swarm with them in search of acorns and the thundering of musketry is perpetual on all sides from morning to night wagon loads of them are poured into market where they sell from fifty to twenty-five and even twelve cents per dozen and pigeons become the order of the day at dinner breakfast and supper until the very name becomes sickening the range of the passenger pigeon covered nearly the whole united states from the atlantic coast westward to the rocky mountains a few bold pigeons crossed the rocky mountains into oregon northern california and washington but only as stragglers few and far between the wide range of this bird was worthy of a species that existed in millions and it was persecuted literally all along the line the greatest slaughter was in michigan ohio and pennsylvania in eighteen forty eight massachusetts gravely passed a law protecting the netters of wild pigeons from foreign interference there was a fine of ten dollars for damaging nets or frightening pigeons away from them this was on the theory that the pigeons were so abundant that they could not by any possibility ever become scarce and that pigeon slaughter was a legitimate industry in eighteen sixty seven the state of new york found that the wild pigeon needed protection and enacted a law to that effect the year eighteen sixty eight was the last year in which great numbers of passenger pigeons nested in that state eaton in the birds of new york said that millions of birds occupied the timber along bell's run near ceres allegheny county on the pennsylvania line in eighteen seventy massachusetts gave pigeons protection except during an open season and in eighteen seventy eight pennsylvania elected to protect pigeons on their nesting grounds the passenger pigeon millions were destroyed so quickly and so thoroughly en masse that the american people utterly failed to comprehend it and for thirty years obstinately refused to believe that the species had been suddenly wiped off the map of north america there was years of talk about the great flocks having taken refuge in south america or in mexico and being still in existence there were surmises about their having all gone out to sea and perished on the briny deep a thousand times at least wild pigeons have been reported as having been seen these rumors have covered nearly every northern state the whole of the southwest and california for years and years we have been patiently writing letters to explain over and over that the band-tailed pigeon of the pacific coast and the red-billed pigeon of arizona and the southwest are neither of them the passenger pigeon and never can be there was a long period wherein we believed many of the pigeon reports that came from the states where the birds once were most numerous but that period has absolutely passed during the past five years large cash rewards aggregating about five thousand dollars have been offered for the discovery of one nesting pair of genuine passenger pigeons many persons have claimed this reward of professor c f hodge of clark university worcester massachusetts and many claims have been investigated the results have disclosed many mourning doves but not one pigeon now we understand that the quest is closed 
and hope has been abandoned. The passenger pigeon is a dead species. The last wild specimen, so we believe, that ever will reach the hands of man was taken near Detroit, Michigan on September 14, 1908, and mounted by C. Campion. That is the one definite, positive record of the past ten years. The fate of this species should be a lasting lesson to the world at large. Any wild bird or mammal species can be exterminated by commercial interests in twenty years' time or less. End of The Passenger Pigeon by William T. Hornaday